Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody ready to study God's Word? Yes. Amen. This morning we are continuing in our study through 1 Corinthians. Uh, in light of last week, we had to take a little break, um, but we're picking back up in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to start off in verse 12 and make our way through verse 31, finishing off this chapter. If you're here and you don't have a Bible, if you raise your hand, someone will get you a Bible. Donovan is in the back there. First Corinthians chapter 12. And by the way, last week, uh, Easter service, I really enjoyed myself and I, I uh, really enjoyed even going out to the pavilion and doing worship out there. And even though the a weatherman said it was 100% chance of rain. He lied. Our God is the one who determines uh, what happens in the heavenlies. And so the Lord kept the rain back and we're able to enjoy a beautiful day. Just a cool breeze and a wonderful time of worship. Great fellowship and fun. And God did a wonderful work there. And I am so uh, appreciative of how he blessed us. Um, so if you have your spot, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, let's pray. Lord, we do come to you, Lord, always giving you thanks, first of all, Lord, because you have blessed us beyond measure. Lord, if we just take inventory of our lives, if we think about just the fact that we wake up in the morning and that you're the one that, that put your, your, uh, your breath, Lord, in our nostrils, Lord, our, uh, so that we can breathe, Lord, that you give us the strength to get up out of our bed, Lord, that you provided the very meals that we eat, Lord, we can go on and on, Lord, of the many blessings. And so with that, Lord, we just want to bless you in return. Lord, when we sing our praise, Lord, we want to sing it to you with all of our hearts, Lord. Let us not come here with just uh, empty words, Lord, but that we will focus on you, Lord, our Lord and Savior, the one who died for us. And Lord, as we study your word, Lord, we know that you have a word for us. You want to speak to each person here because, Lord, that's what you uh, intended when you had these apostles and others uh, pen them for us, Lord. And so you uh, had them written, you know, how many thousands of years ago, Lord, but it still speaks to us today. So thank you for your word. We pray your blessing upon it, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it was an awkward morning for a certain pastor, as after one of his sermons, he was approached by a woman. She came running to him and she said, Oh, pastor, you have such a beautiful body. I am so blessed by your body. And of course, people around looked and said, What is going on here? And she said, Yes, your body is just so beautiful because everybody just loves me and everybody is taking care of me. You have a beautiful body. She's, of course, talking about the church, the body of Christ. <laughs> but that's what we are. And when we function and operate the way that God intends for it to be operated, then we are a beautiful body. But have you ever heard of anyone talked about a church like, they don't have a beautiful body. They have issues. They have problems. Ugh, ugly body. <laughs> hey, listen, Paul is dealing with a church, the Corinthian church, which when he left them a couple of years earlier, it was a beautiful body. He planted the church, they flourished, they grew, but then over time, something began to happen where now he's pointing at them and saying, guys, you guys look, need to look in the mirror because you're not becoming, you're becoming ugly. You're becoming, well, let's deal with that, he will say. And that's what we pick up in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Remember, last week, or the week before, we talked about how God gave gifts he gave activities, and he gave ministries to the body that we may operate and be a beautiful, well-functioning body. And so that's what we left off with the gifts last week, and now he goes into verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of the body, excuse me, of the one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Again, Paul is saying to them, that you are part of the body. Now, again, when you consider the body, the human body is made up 
of, of many different parts, and each part has a different function. But the human body is an amazing, well, it's an amazing work of art. When you think about what God has done, he created this body. Have you considered your body? When you consider, for example, in your body, it's made up of seven uh, octillion atoms. Uh, to give you a perspective, if you think about our galaxy, we have about 300 million stars. And our body has so much more going on in there. When you look at your eyes, your, your, the human eyes is, is so sensitive that if, you, if the earth was flat and you could look uh, as far as you can see, if there's a candle 30 miles away flickering, your eyes will be able to see that light. That's, that's a distance from here to the beach. And I should know I measured it. <laughs> 30 miles, you can see a little candlelight. If you consider your brain, the human brain, uh, if it was a computer, it would be able to, to perform 38,000 trillion operations per second. Now, to give you, a, again, another comparison, if you look at the, the, the most powerful uh, computer, the supercomputer, super the blue-green, um, blue gene, excuse me, uh, it, it can only compute 0.002% of what your brain can compute. Amazing. When you look at your heart, your heart pumps 74 gallons of blood in one hour. That's 1,800 uh, 1, gallons in a 24-hour period. When you look at your nose, well, well, some people have big nose, some people have small nose, but nevertheless, listen, it can remember 50,000 different scents. You ever walk in someone's house and say, I, I know this person's house. I, I smell this person. Or, or you, you, you listen, you smell food, and you, you know exactly what it is. That's the ability that the nose has. When you look at your tongue, well, your tongue gives you the ability to talk. The, it gives you the ability to eat. If you don't have a tongue, you can't really eat. You can't swallow. But it also, well, it, it gives, um, well, it's covered with taste buds, and it allows you to taste and enjoy many of the foods that you enjoy. The tongue. And when you look at your fingers, well, your fingers, it allows us to hold, it allows us to touch and feel, but also it allows us to, well, it points out, do you know this? It points out when you have sickness in your life. On your little fingernails, there's little marks that you will see every now and then. If your nail is brittle, it, it's talking, it's showing you if there, your, there's any deficiency in your body, if there's something wrong, and it's able to point that out. That's why it's a pointy finger. And some of you are pointy fingers. I see something wrong in your body. And is it a bad thing? No, it's a good thing. Well, it all depends on how you do it. When you look at your liver, we don't think about our liver, do we? Well, it's there, and it's very important, and it, does, uh, it has an important function in the body. It, it detoxifies the body. When you, for example, take some kind of a drug, it, it filters that drug from your body. When you, you take some alcohol, and some of you might be drinking alcohol, but if, you weren't, if it wasn't for your liver, you won't be able to uh, take those toxins out of your body, which will, of course, be fatal. So I don't know why you want to drink alcohol, but in every, any case, well, you know, so is, as Paul is saying, just as the body is an amazing work of art, and, uh, has some amazing function, so is the body of Christ. And each of us have an, a, 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 a function to play. Each of us have a different role. It's important, and everyone is important, no matter how small or insignificant you may think. Listen, in God's eye, it's you are important. And so Paul is making this point, and he says in verse 13, For by one spirit we were all baptized in one body, whether Jew or Greek, whether slaves or free, and having all been made to drink into one spirit, for in fact the body is not one member, but many. You see, by one spirit, Paul is saying, we were baptized in the body. We were baptized by one spirit. Notice how many times he said one. And if you go back again, when he was talking about the gifts, he's, he kept talking about one. What is he trying to say is, yes, we are many, but we have one purpose. We have one calling. We have to accomplish one one deed, one task. And, you know, when he says here that the body is made up of many, uh, you know, and, and by the way, let me just say this. This is one of the reasons why we don't even have a church membership here. Who, who, gives, who brings people into the body? I don't have the authority to say who gets to be a part of this body. 
It's the Holy Spirit that brings and draws people and says, I want you to go here and I want you to go there. So if you come here and you feel comfortable and you said, man, I feel like I'm part of this body, man, bless the Lord. We're happy to have you. But if you say, I feel like the Lord is calling me somewhere else, bless the Lord. He has you go somewhere else because why? No matter if you're here or there, we're still going to accomplish one thing. That's to glorify God. And so we don't own anyone here. And so he says, it is one spirit. And notice he said that it, it, well, really, there are many churches. As you can see, you can drive around and you're going to see many churches. But again, it's still one body. And there are many types of people and people groups within the body. In our church, you look around, you see white people, black people, yellow and, and green and purple. And the brown one in the back raising her hand, she wants to be included, you know. But it's different people from different backgrounds, but yet it's still one body. And all being led and directed by one spirit. You see, the brain of this church is not me or any of the elders. The brain of the church is the Holy Spirit. Again, he's the one that leads and he's the one that directs. And he's the one that's going to say, hey, Mexico, hey, hey, the homeless, oh, hey, the widows, the orphans, hey. And now everyone comes together and supports where the Holy Spirit leads. But the problem that we encounter, because this is what Paul is dealing with, problems in the church. The problem that we encounter is when we begin to compare one body against another. So, for example, if I come up here and I say, well, did you see my muscle? Look at that. You will say, what muscle? <laughs> but somebody else that's been going to the gym every day, they will say, well, Alan, let me show you mine. Mine's just bigger than yours, so therefore it's better than yours. Well, let me ask you, what are you doing with your muscle? <laughs> Someone might say, well, I have nice hair, you know? And others is kind of like, oh, something is here. I, I'll, get, I'll get one. There you go. <laughs> Again, and some might say, well, did you see my brain? <laughs> I'm smart. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you about physics. Let me tell you. Well, what are you doing? Is, is it... God give you that brain for you? Did he give you that muscle so you can show out? Did he give you beautiful hair so you can draw attention to yourself? What, what is he doing? What, what did he get, give you that for? But you see, when we begin to compare ourselves with other people, one of two things will happen. Listen, number one, we either will say, I am not like them, so I won't. Again, I am not like that person, I don't have the brain, I don't have the hair, I don't have whatever, so I, I won't be a part. But secondly, the, you might say, you are not like us, so you can't. You can't do this because you're, you're not a, 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 a part, like you're not doing what I'm doing, so therefore you're not good, and so you can't. Listen, that's, Paul, that's what Paul is going to deal with in verse 15. He says, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. And if the heir should say, because I am not an eye, am I not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? You see, Paul again is dressing the parts of the body uh, who says, I am not like them or I'm not like you, so I won't. You see, I, I won't go to church because I don't feel like I, I fit in. I, I won't serve I won't get involved because I'm not like them. I'm not like you. I'm not, I don't pray like you. I don't, I don't speak like you. I don't serve like you. So therefore, you know what? I'm not going to be a part of the body. Do you know that the church today is a dysfunctional church and is not operating in, in its fullest potential because somewhere, listen, somewhere there is a foot and that foot is probably sitting on a lazy boy somewhere, relaxing, instead of being here, helping the church be mobilized. Somewhere out there, there's a pair of eyes probably on a cruise ship right now, enjoying the scenery of the Caribbean, instead of being here to give vision to the church, to the body. Somewhere out there, there's a brain absorbing lots of useless information on the internet, instead of being here and being able to instruct people in God's word. 
Somewhere out there, there's a hand that's serving itself instead of being here to serve the needy within the body. Somewhere out there, there's a liver that's filtering uh, uh, alcohol instead of being here to filter out bad, bad doctrine in the church. Somewhere out there, there's a mouth that's complaining about the church giving them a bad taste instead of being here to be able to encourage and edify and build up the church, the body of Christ. You see, each person, each, each part of the body plays an important role. And because some people say, you know what, I'm disconnecting myself from the body, guess what? The result, well, there's a hand in here that's uh, filling in the role of a mouth. And there's a nose in here that's, that's playing on ears. And there's a eyes that's somewhere trying to walk. And we're all trying to get things in order because why? Everyone that's supposed to be here is not here. You see, recently, uh, last week, I was listening to uh, Ravi Zachariah. And if you know him, man, this guy, well, if I were to comp uh, compare my brain with his, this, this is his brain and this is mine, you know? I mean, a brilliant guy. And he's probably one of the most brilliant people of our time. And I thank God for him because why he is an apologist where he defends the faith. And I, I, I'm just, I do watch and I'm just in a, amazement of the knowledge and the wisdom that God has given him. And boy, when I look at him, I'm thinking, why am I, why are you calling me to be a pastor, Lord? I'm not as wise as him. You know what? I quit. I can't. Because the moment that I quit, well, you see, I am not him. God called him to, to fulfill a different role in the church, in the body. He has a specific ministry that God called him, and I thank God for him. And so I celebrate him instead of being envious of him. And so Paul says, well, here's his correction of that person who will say, I am not, so therefore I won't. He says in verse 14, if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing, where would, where would be the hearing? If the whole body... Uh, excuse me, if the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? You see, here's a point that Paul is trying to make. He said, don't disconnect yourself from the body just because your gifting and calling is different from others. Again, just because you're, you, you, you're different from others, don't disconnect. Don't do it. See, we need to be what God called us to be. We, we need, if you're an arm, be an arm. If you're a leg, be an leg. If you're an eye, be an eye. If you're a foot, be a foot. <clears throat> Fulfill that role. And let me also add, don't try to be something that you're not. If you're a, a, a heart, don't try to be a brain. You're going to hurt yourself trying to think. <laughs> and if you're a hand, don't try to be a foot. And if you're a foot, don't try to be a hand. How would you like if someone who was a foot is trying to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and instead they get toe jam in there? <laughs> Gross. That's why people say, ah, the church tastes bad. It's peanut butter and toe jam. I'm out of here. No, let the hand be the hand. And if your foot be the foot, mobilize the church. We are to celebrate the gifts that God has given us and celebrate the gift that he has given others. In verse 20, he says, but now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eyes cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again, the, hat, the head uh, to the feet, I have no need of you. So now Paul is addressing the other part of the body who is saying, uh, you are not like us, so you can't. In other words, that part of the body is saying, well, let me go around and see who does not belong here. And we are determining, oh, you don't belong here. Let me, let me get you out of here. I'm cutting you off. I need to do a demonstration. Um, anyone? I, I, I need a finger. Come. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> He wants to, yeah, we won't go there. But hey, listen, we're not, that, we're not to fulfill that role. 
That is God's role. Again, if you are part of this body and you feel like you're not fitting in, that is fine. It just means that maybe God wants you somewhere else. But don't we, as the body, look at someone and say, well, that person looked like they don't fit in. You know, one of the things that Gigi and I in Fort Lauderdale that we always sought to do is whenever we went to our couple's Bible study, we, you know, probably, you know, 100 people that will show up, uh, 50 couples maybe, and we always will go to the table where it have a couple that's sitting by themselves. They don't fit in. They don't, they don't feel like they're, you know, no one is paying attention. So that's where we'll go. We want to make sure that they're feeling welcome. And that's what we're supposed to do when we see someone that just don't fit in. Listen, go and, f- and help them out and try to support them and encourage them. You don't know what's going on in their lives. You don't know if they have a sickness. You don't know what's going on. So that's what we're supposed to do. But Paul is saying, don't cut them out. We must be careful we're not com- complaining, again, or cutting off parts of the body that is not like you. If, if you know, some people say, well, if I was a pastor of this church, you know, I would. <laughs> if I was a worship leader, I won't sing that song. It was the, the Sunday. Listen, you're not. Can I lovingly say you're not? But let me ask you, what are you though? What are you doing with what God is calling you? I'm doing this in a loving way. <laughs> I'm not complaining. I, I'm, I can tell you that. I'm not complaining. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. <laughs> Some of you may have heard well, it was in the news, the story of the Master Tool Convention. The story goes, I will just read it. Mr. Hammer was appointed to preside over a Master Tool Convention, but Brother Screwdriver objected, saying, Brother Hammer, you're too noisy to preside over this meeting. You're always driving home your point, always nailing people. I call for your resignation immediately. Brother Hammer responded, well, what about you, Brother Screwdriver? All you ever do is spin around in circles. That may be true, said Brother Screwdriver, but at least I'm not Brother Plain. His work is surface, so shallow, what right does he have to even be here? If you're going to kick me out, Brother, uh, protested Brother Plain, what about Brother Ruler? He thinks he's always right, measuring everyone else by his standard. (laughs) Well, if you're going to come down on me, argue Brother Ruler, what about Brother Pliers? He needs to get a grip. (laughs) At least I don't rub people the wrong way, said Brother Pliers, staring at Brother Sandpaper. (laughs) But then just then, Master Craftsman walks in, and as he used each tool, At the perfect time, he created an object of beauty. Do you see? Everyone is complaining. Everyone is comparing. Everyone is ready to cut people out. But each one, each one of you, in God's hands, as he uses you in in his way in a perfect time, he makes something beautiful. And that is what God is doing. As he even plants us in this community, God wants to do something beautiful. You know, last week as we were out, in the park, this young boy, 10, 12 years old, he came and he was just kind of in the outskirts, just looking in and, and he finally came over and as we talked to him, he said, you know, uh, he, Robbie was talking to him and he said, you know, um, I'm just here because I'm staying with my aunt and she's crying all the time, so I just want to get out of the house. You see, while we're here so busy fighting and arguing among each other, there's someone in a house crying. Keep in mind, 50% of, the, of, of marriages end in divorce, so that means if you walk down the street, half of the street means that people are going through something. They're going through a difficult time, and instead of us going out there, being the hands and feet and the love in the heart, and, and going out there and doing that, we're here dividing and, and arguing. Well, you're not. You, you don't add up, and, you, and why are you measuring me? And why are you nailing me? Listen, let's not do that. God wants to do a great work. And we are the one that's going to hinder that work because, again, we are in this toolbox just arguing. He says, look at Paul's correction in verse 22. He says, no, much rather these members of the body which seem to be 
weaker are necessary. Again, the parts that seem weaker, the parts that you look on and says, what, what part do you play is necessary? You know, the Lord had uh, spoke to me about that when I was, you know, a lot younger as a, a, a pastor. And I was looking out and saying, what are you guys doing? You guys are not doing anything. And he knocked them out and he said, well, if they all leave, who will you preach to? They're necessary, huh? You ever compare the arm and the kidney? Again, the arm is strong. Kidney looks weak. Well, who's more important? Well, if you think about it, the kidney is not as strong, but can we live without the kidney? You can't. But can you live without the arm? I'm an arm. I look at my strength. Yep. Cut you off. Kidney, you can't do without. You see, whenever a kidney protests, you know it's... A serious business, right? He says in verse 23, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow great, greater honor, and our unpleasant parts have greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no need. Listen, Paul is saying those who seem less honorable, we gave greater honor or, 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 or more attention an example would be when you're, uh, you're getting ready for church in the morning. Well, what part of the body that you give more attention? Well, a lot of us spend time in the mirror. mirror you know, makeup and lipstick and, and, you know, if, you have, if you're black and you have an afro, you know, you, you, you know, you're patting it down, making sure it's in shape. W what are you doing? You're spending a lot of time in the mirror to do what? The strong part? No, the face is not the strongest part. It's the weakest part. If it was strong, well, you wake up in the morning and say, I'm beautiful. I don't have to touch this face. And you walk around with a, a mirror because I'm just beautiful. But no, you're, you're propping it up and you're making it up and you're cutting it up and you're doing all kinds of things. Because why? Is it strong? No, because it's weak. And so that's the point that Paul is making. For those who seem to be less honorable, we give greater honor. But for the part that, that is strong, well, you don't do the same for your liver. You wake up, you don't even think about it. You just go on with life. Liver is strong, not your face. <laughs> In the same way, the body have both strong and weak uh, Christians. And I thank God for those who are strong. I thank God for each person that's, you know, well, there's, everything is, is going well and they're functioning well. But I also... Uh, give special care to those who are weak, those who are hurt, and those who are, well, for the brother who is struggling and lost, man, I don't, I don't cut them out. I, I, I give attention to them. For the sister who is struggling with pride, man, gee, go, go deal with her. Oh. <laughs> you see, we have to give attention. And listen, what Paul is saying is that God has designed it that way so that nobody gets left out, that everybody gets the attention that is needed because, again, we are one body. He says in verse, the second half of verse 24, but God composed the body having given, uh, having given greater honor to the parts which lacks it, that there should be no schisms in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And if one member suffers, listen, all the members suffer with it, or if one member is, is honored, all the members rejoice with it. You see, God has designed it that way. Again, why? Because, well, if you're going to complain, uh, excuse me, if you're going to compliment me, some people complain to me, but if you're going to compliment me for delivering a good message, Pastor, that was a great message. Listen, did you go and compliment the guy and the gal who is cleaning the toilet? They play just as important role as me because you know why? If you go in that bathroom, you like that thing have poop all over the place. I ain't coming back. It doesn't matter how good my sermon is. So have you given them thanks? Have you thanked the person who's taking care of the outside? Have you, have you done that? That's an important role as well. You see, I'm thankful for them because, man, it frees me up that I don't have to you know, worry about how the bathroom is. I didn't go and look in the bathroom this morning and say, man, I hope it's in, I know they take care of it. Why? They're doing it behind the scene. But they're playing an important role. 
And so, yes, I appreciate the, the you know, blessing. Oh, thank you, Pastor, for sharing a good word. But, man, make sure that you're complimenting them as well. They, they do just as important work as I am doing. And everyone in the body that's doing their part. So here's why Paul is saying that this is important. Because he says, if, we, if one suffers, all suffers. And if one rejoices, all rejoices. If one person is hurting in the body, we all hurt. Again, if someone is sick in here and they are not able to come to church and, and, and fulfill their part, man, what are we going to do? Somebody's missing. Now we have to try to fill in that spot. You know, we're short on Sunday school teachers. We, we need someone to clean the, the restrooms. We need, oh, how are we going to do it? Now we're all scrambling. We're suffering. But man, when, when, some, when, when, the, when one person rejoices, when we all rejoice, when we see someone come to the Lord because everyone was doing their part and now somebody comes to the Lord, guess what? We celebrate. We're happy. Praise the Lord. God is good. And so that's why we need to make sure that nothing keeps us from functioning and, and operating in the things that God has called us to do. And so Paul comes to this point here in verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ. He's speaking of us corporately and members individually. And God has appointed these in the church first, apostle, second, prophets, third, teachers. And after that, miracles, then gifts of healings, help, administration, variety of tongues, are all apostles, of course, he is asking this question, the answer is no. Are all prophets? No. Are, are, are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret, but earnestly desire the best gift? And yet, I, so, I show you a more excellent way. Listen, Paul is making sure that we all understand that we all have a different role. And now as he is talking about, again, uh, you know, he's looking at the gifts that's within the body. God gives each person a gift. Not everybody have the, the ability or the gift of prophecy. Not everybody have the ability to speak in tongues or interpret. Not everybody have the gift of, of healing or miracles. Not everybody has that. Why? Because God has given each person a different call and a different role, a different gift in, a different ministry. And he says this. These things are good. You can prophesy, wonderful. You, you can speak in tongues, great. But I'm calling you to something even greater. He speaks of something that is more excellent, a more excellent way. And this more excellent way we will discuss, of course, in length in chapter 13, which he will get into. But this more excellent way is so important because what holds the body together? What holds us together? Listen, love. That is the most excellent way. And Paul would talk about, yeah, you can speak in tongues, you can have prophecy, you can beat yourself in, into submission, you can do all these things but have not love. You have nothing. Why? Because we need love to hold us together. When someone's offends you, we need love to hold us together, to bring us back together. Do you understand in a body, just like a, a newborn baby, as the baby is born, you know what happens? That baby immediately begins to grow. And the, ba the, the clothes that you bought that child, when they were one month old, they were only going to be able to wear it one time because they're going to outgrow it. You keep it on them, they're going to look like the Incredible Hulk, you know, paint them green. But they're only able to wear it once or twice because why? They're growing. And what starts to happen? Well, they're going to start having growing pains. The teeth start to come in. They're going to get sick, right? They're going to start learning how to walk. And what, what happens when you start walking? You're going to fall and bruise yourself. They're going to grow a little bit more. And now the clothes, again, they're starting to feel too snuggle. Uh, if you're a family and you're a growing family, you probably need a bigger house. You need room to grow. You see, what happens here is growing pains. And as more people are entering into the body, as we start to grow, well, mm, I don't like that. You're in my space. We were comfortable, you know. There's no, much, no, no more room in this diaper for two of us. I already made it brown, a soilet. <laughs> Growing pains. And we begin to moan and we begin to shuffle and we begin to, listen, the more excellent way is love. 
And so no matter what happens in the body, we need to continue to operate in love. If your, your, your hand offend you, man, go and make peace with your hand. If your mouth says something stupid or has bad breath, man, let's go give them some breath mint or something. That's a loving thing to do. But don't, listen, don't, let me put this in a positive way. When you go in the mirror, fix up your body so when the body goes out into the world, people will say, you have a beautiful body. Amen? And so, Lord, we thank you that you have called us and made us the body of Christ. The body of Christ, as people will pray, oh God, if you are, if you are real, Lord, that you will show up. And, and here comes the Christian knocking on the door saying, God loves you. Listen, that's our role. That's what you have us here for, Lord, to, to bless others as we uh, fulfill the role of the body. And so, Lord, we, we are here, Lord, and, and now that as we uh, consider that in our body, Lord, there's always a chance that someone will be here that don't know you as Lord and Savior. And Lord, your word says that unless someone is born again, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. Unless they are born again, they will not be a part of your body. And so, Lord, I pray for anyone who is here that is, have not considered, that have not given great thought to their, their eternity, Lord, that they will consider that they, too, are, are sinners just like every one of us and that we need a Savior. I pray that you'll minister to them. And Lord, even as we will partake and participate, Lord, in the Lord's Supper, as he refers to it as the body and blood of Christ. And uh, Lord, we pray that you will just minister to each one of us here, uh, that we may draw closer to you, that we may uh, fulfill the, 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 the call in, upon our lives as you just speak to us. So, Lord, I, I thank you, I bless you, I praise you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen.